Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about Auto Scalearn, uh, which is an automated machine learning pre framework and a drop and replacement for scikit-learn estimators. This is very similar to Teapot that I have walked through some time back. In case if you have not seen Teapot, you can click or click the link on the top to watch it. But this is not the, that is not a prerequisite for this video. Uh, this video can be watched by itself. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a code and then uh, see how uh, we can we are going to take a data set and see how auto sklearn can be used for the data set. We are going to see some of the features of the uh, auto sklearn and also com compared with other frameworks that we have seen in the past. Basically, we have seen H2 auto ML, we have seen uh, teapot and then we have seen auto ML. So all the three videos are there in my channel. You can watch it. Uh, we are just going to compare some of the differences so that it helps us pick the right auto ML framework for our problem statement. Now, uh, coming to the code, uh, basically uh, the first uh, line here over here, three lines is to install auto sklearn. Uh, basically you have the requirements that is uh, a requirement or text that has all the installation required for auto sklearn and you need to run it before running auto sklearn. Now I have already installed it. It's going to take some time, so I'm not going to run it now, but I have already installed it. Uh, the notebook is available as usual in the video description below. So basically you can uh, open the notebook and you can uh, click over, click open in collab and you can run it by yourself. Uh, but um, the, the, the software is already installed and I'm going to just uh, start uh, demoing the product uh, here on. So the first thing what we do is we import all the packages required. Um, here I'm not importing auto scalar net. I'm just importing the regular machine learning typical packages we install, we import for, um, we import for machine learning job, the NumPy, Pandas, uh, basically the model selection package and everything. So I'm going to run it. Uh, I'm going to use the same data set that I used in the previous videos. This is basically a telecom churn data set by IBM. It is available in my GitHub repo. And uh, the link for again the GitHub is in the video description, so you can just download the uh, data set and play around. So basically, I'm going to use the data set. Now, let's just uh, check the data set once. So basically, the data set is about predicting whether a customer will churn or not. Now, there are multiple uh, futures over here. There are futures about customer like gender, senior citizen, partner, whether the customer has a dependent. These are all like futures about the customer. There are futures about customer product. What kind of telecom product he has? Does he have a phone service? Does he have a phone, multiple line phone service? Does he have internal service, internet service? And finally, uh, basically, what is the charges he's paying? And finally, a column churn that we are going to predict. So basically, uh, if the customer has churned, there will be a yes. And if he has not, then there will be a no. So this is the column we are going to predict. And this is a slightly imbalanced data set. If you check here, uh, uh, basically, uh, the not churned customer are like uh, almost, I think, three times more than uh, uh, the churned customer. So basically, it's a little slightly imbalanced data set. Now, one thing about auto SK learn. Auto SK learn uh, does not do the data pre-processing, not all the data pre-processing rather, uh, similar to how H2 auto ML and auto VML does it. Basically, when we saw auto VML, we didn't do anything with the data, data set. We just took the data set and we passed it on. Most of the columns over here are categorical column in this data set if you see here. So basically, auto VML and H2O ML were able to uh, automatically numeric and encode it numerically and then take care of it. But here, it is very similar to Teapot. We have to manually encode those columns into numerical uh, values. Basically, we are doing a numerical encoding here. And then um, uh, feed it onto the auto SQLN package that can uh, basically uh, do the right model selection and hyperparameter tuning. It does uh, do some kind of data pre-processing, which we'll talk about. Uh, but uh, as I'm repeating again, you need to do the numerical encoding. It does not take string values. It takes only numerical values. So here, what I'm doing is uh, one, uh, basically I'm using the, uh, uh, first thing, uh, there are a couple of nulls in the data set uh, that is on the column total charges. So I'm just taking that and I'm uh, filling the null value uh, with an uh, median of that particular column. So that is what I'm doing. Uh, first is I'm doing a missing value imputation. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the columns that are categorical value and then uh, do an ordinal encoder. So basically, I'm not doing a one hot encoding. One hot encoding is done automatically by uh, auto scalar. What I'm doing is I'm just doing an ordinal encoder uh, over here. Uh, so in case if uh, one hot encoding required, that is that is taken care. We'll see like how uh, auto scale on, uh, runs different model. You can visualize that. Uh, but here I'm just doing an aut uh, ordinary encoder. So all the categorical values basically will get converted into uh, numerical values over here. Okay. Uh, then then basically what I'm doing is I am taking this converted value. And then I am, uh, I am basically updating the data, main data set. So basically, uh, the churn transformed is the column out of the ordinal encoder value. And then I am assigning it to an uh, separate data frame and I am updating the main data frame churn DF, which we created here initially. This is the churn DF. I am updating it uh, with uh, the uh, encoded value. So basically, if you see here in churn DF finally, you will have all the values that are encoded into numeric. So there's no more uh, string values. Everything is numeric over here. Only the first column is string, but that is an, uh, that is an just customer identifier. We don't need that column for the model. Uh, so what I will be doing is I am, uh, I am basically creating an uh, future data frame and I am copying all the value and then I'm creating the target uh, data frame and, uh, and kind of taking the churn column and then populating it. Since I am using a path function, it will it will remove the churn column from the uh, future data frame and then i am also removing the customer id because that is not required for the model it is just a sequence number so pop uh, removes the particular uh, column from the data frame and then uh, one more thing over here is when we feed uh, by default uh, pandas it will be of object type uh, because it has string value uh, to for auto sk learn to work you have to convert uh, the, the columns to mostly numerical or categorical. So it cannot be object. It can be string or uh, numerical. So what I'm doing is I'm converting all the value to integers since I am already encoded it. Right. Now, uh, I am splitting the particular data frame into 75 25 ratio. So in this case, I am splitting into 75 25 ratio, creating an train and test data frame. And then now I'm coming to the core functionality. I am importing the auto SQL learn package. I uh, this is a classification problem. So I'm importing the classifier. I'm going to run this two steps and then uh, this will take some time to run and then explain uh, the explain the auto SQL learn classifier. I'm going to run this and the next one and then explain it so that the uh, model selection and hyperparameter tuning goes on in parallel. Now coming back to the auto ML auto SQL and classifier. So basically we can specify some kind of parameters on what we want this particular classifier uh, to do. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm telling it to run only for uh, 120 seconds. That is two minutes and per task that is each model don't spend more than 30 seconds. The reason is uh, auto ML packages are pretty compute intensive. If you don't kind of time box it and run, it will run forever and it will uh, kind of run for two, three hours to find the best model. We don't want to do that. We want to time limit it over here. But when in real world scenario, it's better to have an um, higher time uh, to find the better model. But since there's only an um, this is only a walkthrough of the futures of auto scalar, I'm just running it for two minutes. These, these are two parameters. The end job says like how many uh, parallel uh, threads you want to run. So in this case, I put two. Now include estimators. If we don't give any include estimators, then it will search across all the estimators. So there are multiple estimators. There are random forest, Hada boost. There is a K nearest neighborhood. There is an Bernoulli uh, classifier. Uh, there are multiple classifiers over here. But in this case, what I am telling is I am uh, just limiting it to random forest and uh, uh, gradient descent uh, classifier. And then the pre-processing component of it, if you want to run any PCA or any other functionality, I'm telling don't run any pre-processing for me uh, in this case. So this is the this is the definition of the, our uh, auto ML, uh, auto scale and classifier. Uh, to to kind of give an parameter on what a kind of uh, what kind of parameters it need to run on. 
there are a lot of other parameters if we have an imbalanced data set if you want to do kind of an old out data set and everything uh, you can check the documentation but these are some of the key parameters and then what i am doing is i am taking a train data set and fitting it with the um, auto ml auto sk learn classifier so basically i am passing the train and test data set now this has taken two minutes because that is the configuration that has completed um, basically it is uh, it is giving that the classifier is completed let's visualize like what it has done so first thing is show models now show models will give too much of information so but you can just pr uh, print and see like uh, what are the different models it evaluated but it, it is not going to give a lot of meaningful information over here and if you see here it has kind of uh, trying to do a categorical encoding also in some cases right but i uh, this print statistics is what we require basically what it is going to take is it's going to take the best model out of all and auto scale on what it does is it internally also creates an ensemble model uh, finally it takes all the models and create an uh, ensemble model and then give the output so basically the best validation score that we have got is 0 0.80 and within two minutes it has done around 128 algorithm run out of that 127 was successful and one uh, because we are given the 30 seconds limit one uh, passed the limit and it, it it got failed right so basically it has searched 128 models during that time now what i'm doing is i'm taking the best model uh, and seeing what is the hyperparameter over there so this command right auto ml dot cv underscore results and then i'm taking the arg max uh, over there and then taking the mean test score so this will give you the best model over there so the best model that was selected is an basically uh, SGD model and these are the different hyperparameters that were used within the SGD model and there were no pre-processing basically there was an uh, one not encoding that it did uh, for uh, some of the columns as I said we are doing only numerical encoding uh, let the auto ML framework figure out whether one not encoding is required uh, so and then it, it is basically using an inch loss and these are all the different uh, hyperparameter of that uh, best model that uh, got selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the test data set and then uh, predict it. So we saw an 80% accuracy, I think, right? Yeah, we saw an 80% accuracy. So what I'm doing is I predicted with the X, uh, with the test data set and let me see like what is the accuracy on the test data set. So the test data set is around 81, uh, which is pretty close to uh the the validation score that we got uh now basically this is how we create the classifier and finally what we can do is we can uh pick the model and then we can uh, create a pickle file out of it that can be deployed in the pipeline so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to import pickle and then uh, pickle the uh, i'm just taking the show models and creating the ensemble as i said uh, this framework creates a ensemble of models and what we are for final model is a ensemble of models basically that's what we are selecting over here and we are converting it to a pickle file so if you go to the uh, directory you can see this uh, pickle file over here uh, so uh, basically uh, what I'm doing after that is I'm just uh, running some of the metrics on uh, based uh, on the predictions like whatever the bin basically uh, 1367 are not churned and 394 are churned similarly on the test is 1312 and 449 that is definitely some difference over here so let's uh, let's try to understand like uh, what are the let's see a confusion matrix and try to understand like uh, what are the false positives and false negatives uh, yeah, I, I also created a plot over here. You can you can go through it. The the point I'm trying to make is this a very imbalanced data set. So even though we have a pretty good accuracy, accuracy is not a right measure over here. It should be like something like precision or recall, depending on what we are trying to solve uh, problem we are yeah, trying to solve. So basically, if you see the confusion matrix, uh, uh, the North Chun uh, 1179 was predicted cor correctly. Uh, but at the same time like 133 were predicted wrong and similarly for the other case so if you see the final precision score and uh, uh, recall score the precision score is 66 and uh, the recall score is around 58 now uh, it, uh, it may not be a pretty good precision and recall uh, score uh, depending on the problem you are trying to solve but uh, with a with with only a one line of code rather than we running uh, multiple set of hyperparameters and multiple set of models we can we, with just configuration and one line of code we are able to uh, come up with this model and if you see here i have not done any future engineering at all 
that is pretty key to any data set to give uh, a better outcome. So basically, if I do some future engineering and again run an auto ML model, it's basically an iterative process that I have go to go through. It may give a better outcome over here. So that's it with uh, auto SQLearn. In fact, like that is that's it with uh, the auto ML series that I have been doing. Uh, I have reviewed like four different uh, auto ML frameworks: uh, Teapot, Auto ML, H2 Auto ML, and Auto SQLearn. Uh, all the four have some kind of uh, features that are different from each other. And if you review my video, you can get it. And depending on your problem, you can use the right framework. Thank you.